Welcome back to this year's Babington Cross Country Preview. Sam Watson has been given a private look at the track's toughest fence combinations by the course designer, Eric Winter. This is fence 19, the Night Timber Heights. Brush at the top of the bank and then some angled brushes after. It comes straight after the corners and the ditch combination. So that's quite an intense little section because that's a very difficult fence and this is a very difficult fence as well. Whoa, this is uphill, isn't it? It's yes, a sir. steep mound and it's not small. Yeah. It's, it's big on... And yeah. it'll have a little ground line here on the actual day and obviously the deer fencing behind it will have, will have gone. And are you uh, the first person to give us a triple bounce or what's going on on the other, <laughs> the other side here? Yeah. I think because of the height of the brush, yeah. it, you'll need enough power to get to it because you don't want to dry up at the top and it'll throw you down here quite big. So you can jump the one on the right, but that will have unjumpable behind it, which pushes you out and makes that the slow route. Okay. Or you can jump any one of the three on the left, OK? Right, that's good. OK, big jumping effort coming up. Steep slope coming down. You've gotten back into control. I'm probably drawn to, to the middle one of, of the three on the left here. Um, and at this stage, you'd hope that your horse is just in jumping mode, locking on. If you're having a good round, I think you've just got to show them which one you want to do. Be positive going up to it um, and jump away. But well, I mean, I'm looking back at the, at the Shogun Hollows only 100 yards away. And again, I'm just thinking back to how much jumping we've done in the last few minutes. That really is what badminton's all about. I think if, if you're, you're sort of nearly holding your breath from, yeah. from getting to, to, yeah. through all of this intense jumping area. But if you've done what you should do, you've got a proper five-star horse. Yeah, you hope you can just get through here nice and positively, but we've done a lot it's of It's interesting that, because I walked with Lucinda Green the other day and, and she was going around there a little bit, breaking that line up more and coming to this one. Yeah. Um, and I've walked with somebody else who wanted to pick up that one because they have more time to get to it and more time on the top of the bank. So it's always interesting to me. I've had three, I've walked with three experts now and three experts have come up with three different routes they're going to take. So that should be fab on the day. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. This is 25, the L200 Lake. It's probably the last of the really big uh, twisty turny sort of fences. The rest of them, you know, are big enough five-star fences, but they, they just come up with a little bit more flow. Um, I pulled the logs slightly further back last year, so they land on the dry ground. And then we've put this little bit of brush on the top just to help the horses jumping in. Yeah, they land on the, the, the dry on the far side, but they're not going to know it from this side. So it just, it really gives that imposing feel of yeah. you're jumping into the, the badminton lake again. Yeah, you don't want to be too fast this or you'll miss the bank on the far side. <laughs> I think they'll land sort of here-ish, really. Yeah. I hope. So that's quite nice, I suppose, at, at, at this stage of the course, it's not, not going to feel like such a big drop. Exactly, because we're at plus eight minutes sort of thing. I didn't want to really drop them in the two metres that we did last year. And then keeping out here to just give yourself a little bit of time for the turn from the looks of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How far before it gets really deep out there, right? Oh, you've still got another four metres probably before you really get into the deeper That's water. What no one ever wants is getting no. the last out. <laughs> yeah, so this is, OK, it might be the end of the real intensity, yeah. but we've, we've been... You, you are sort of coming uphill to get, to get up here to yeah. the lake. Um, and as I say, you still, it, this really brings your stamina is going to start yeah, coming yeah. into play as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The um, left house is the slow route, so you can jump up the left house and then go to the other little brush fence at the back of the R200, but you've got two jumping efforts to jump this, whereas uh, you've got three jumping efforts. You've got the house, the nest, and then the other uh, fence, whereas this one, there's just the two efforts, but a much more testy line to this because to jump up that step and turn is... Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big jump out of here still. Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, and, it, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of water and they always seem to, you know, they, they don't land with a huge amount of momentum when they get no, up on that. No, no, there's a little lip beyond the step, 
which just crushes your stride slightly? Yeah, this is a good question, Eric. Yeah. I think I think that that turn in the water is is absolutely key. You've got time out there, but yeah. you really need to be yeah. using it. You don't yeah. want to be spending too long getting your knitting back together. I'm too old to be climbing up steps like that. I was going to give you a hand, <laughs> and then I thought I'd better not insult you. Look at 190. Yeah. As you can see, this fence is still being built, so we're still in those creating stages, last minute touches. Um, Alan's built four Olympics, so that's quite impressive. If you've ridden at that many, you've been doing well. So we're gonna, we're gonna just probably get up just to the edge of the step here. Not gonna get a huge st stride to start with, probably about three and a half yards. And then it looks like you've brought us Beecher's Brook from Aintree here in a, in a narrow form, but you've got one more stride to, to really punch up and attack that big piece yep. of timber. Yeah, it's a big old fence. Yep. <laughs> Just making it narrow. It'll have a well. bit of give in the top of it. It'll be nice and soft anyway. How what, how, how much depth have we uh, got? It's 160. This is only 90 centimetres high, uh, but it's 160 across the top of it. It's the last fence that we really asked that sort of power question. Um, from here on, those fences come up uh, to get you home a little bit more in a rhythm and, and without so much turning and twisting. Well, after the lake, riders have eight more fences and 12 jumping efforts before they hopefully reach the finish line in the main arena, which is where we catch up with Sam. Well, Sam, you've been around the course with Eric. Now he's not here. You can tell me what you really think. What, what was it like, do you think? Yeah, it's decent. It's, it's plenty big enough. Um, it's back to 12 minutes. I, I think it is back to being the, the biggest, probably most physically demanding track again. A lot of jumping. I, I, would, I would call a lot of power jumping and a lot that the riders can't really prepare for. You know, there's not that many, what I would call arena fences where you could go and, oh, I'll, I'll build out my arena at home. There's a lot of footwork. I think that the horse that's gonna go around this course and enjoy it is the horse that loves cross country and that's really what it should be about. Well, before we looked at it, you said that you thought Ingrid had the best chance of winning this year. Do you stand by that having seen the course? Yeah, I think she's got the course experience and the horse has that bit of mileage that I think will help him with his stamina. Uh, I think that's where the first timers could just possibly start to feel it, you know, coming up to that lake, jumping out of the lake, big jumping effort still. So it's relentless. It, it's, it's what a proper five star should be. And I think those, those horses that love their cross country, have a bit of mileage under their belt, um, I think they could, they could enjoy themselves around here. Well, thank you for being our expert on the course here for Badminton 2019 and good luck with everything you do this year. Well, as the rain continues to fall here at Babington, the final word has to go to the Babington boss and event director, Hugh Thomas. Hugh, it's a big year for Babington, but also a sad one, really, because it's the end of an era, isn't it? Well, it is a bit sad. We've had Mitsubishi Motors as our title sponsor for 28 years, which is certainly either the longest or one of the very longest running sports sponsorship. And it's been a terrific partnership. We've got on with each other very well indeed. So we will be sad to see them go. But uh, we've got to keep looking to the future, and if we have fields as strong as this for the next few years at Badminton, I think there's a lot to look forward to. Well, best of luck for this year, Hugh, and best of luck for the future of the Badminton Horse Trials. Many thanks. You can catch all the action from Badminton 2019 with H&C's Highlight Show from Sunday the 12th of May. Find out more and sign up to watch at horseandcountry.tv.